The National Health Insurance Bill has been front and centre over the past few weeks. Health Minister Dr. William Kieze introduced the bill to the National Assembly last week. The bill has to go through the full parliamentary process and if approved, it will be fully implemented in 2026. It hasn't been welcomed by everyone. The Democratic Alliance is questioning the bill's constitutionality and is threatening to take it to the Constitutional Court. Now, joining us now from our Pretoria studio, we have uh, Dr. Zweli M. Kize, who of course is the Minister of Health, and he'll be clarifying what the NH bill entails. Minister, great to have you. Thank you very, very much for your time. Thank you very much, Leanne, and all the viewers. All right, so we know, as Sakina said before the break, this is one of many conversations to come to allow South Africans to clearly understand how NHI is going to work. So as, a, as an opening point, clarify if NHI, by understanding, will eventually lead to the nationalization of the healthcare system in South Africa. Well, it is not correct uh, what uh, I've seen uh, being published about nationalization of the health system. The national health insurance is a funding model that basically brings all the possible sources of funds together to be able to finance health in such a way that uh, all of the South Africans will have equal access. This allows us to have what we call cross subsidization where those who are healthier and therefore don't use health services more, they'll actually contribute so that it covers those who are already in need but can't contribute. It's a fair model of being able to make health as a right in a way that in many countries uh, uh, the, this is what's being done. And it's a, a situation where South Africa has really been lagging behind with the inequality in the access to health. So that is the principle of it. Mm -hmm. And the principle also is about ensuring that uh, the current funds that we have coming from government and then if there's any other additional funds that would come from sources on which government raises uh, funds and also it can come from contributions from employers, employees and so on. All of that is something that is a potential of where the source of funds could be. Then uh, for the next five years we have all the funds we need within the budget and therefore there will not be any impact on the uh, revenue or on the uh, taxes and so on. So after that, then uh, we will then have set up the fund. And when the fund has been set up, we will also be looking at various packages of what would be possible to uh, provide under national health insurance. And the approach is generally that um, there is a fund set. It then purchases services from uh, uh, hospitals, from uh, uh, private uh, specialists, from uh, government uh, hospitals and so on to provide for a community in a particular district. Mm -hmm. So we focus very much on the prevention, what we call primary health care, where we help people with health information, promotion of healthy lifestyle, prevention of disease, uh, palliative care, rehabilitation. Then you end up using multidisciplinary teams of health workers who will help to you know, uh, deal with the prevention, the screening of disease, early diagnosis, early interventions. Now, this approach has been used all over the world to actually keep, fo to focus on keep keeping people healthier rather than to wait for them to come to hospitals where they'll be paying because they can afford or whether they can't reach certain levels of treatment because they cannot afford. All right. Well, I mean, I think you've given us a, a, a great background. Uh, idea of, of how it's going to work. But I know that there are so many questions still surrounding NHI yes. and a lot of concerns as well. So let's, let's try and unpack a couple of them. First, when it comes to costing, how much is expected or is it expected that NHI is going to cost and how will it be funded? Because the worry is that um, taxpayers are going to have to cough up a lot more money. So let, let's talk about costing. Well, uh, firstly, the issue that is raised about nationalization, it is not true that uh, we'll be nationalizing those uh, who run and own hospitals. We won't, government won't take them over. Those who are having private practices, we won't be taken over. Those who are running pharmacies, it won't, they won't be taken over. They'll just be affiliated to help in the services. Then the issue of the cost of the um, of the NHI or the funds that go to the NHI, we identified a number of poten potential sources of where the money should come from. Firstly, 
the money that is allocated to the health department now uh, will all go into that process. Then uh, some of the contributions that government is putting onto the medical aid, what we call medical uh, tax credits, would also have to uh, be pulled together with this fund. And then if there's further need, then the uh, uh, government will have to look at uh, uh, additional uh, uh, surcharges which means contributions from employers, employees, that remains another percent, uh, potential. So uh, those are the areas where we're looking at uh, possibilities of where the money comes from. But at the time when that is needed, Treasury will then issue a money bill that will say this is what we're going to raise and this is what it's going to mean, and only then you're able to deal with it. Now, when it comes to the issue of uh, focusing on the costing, way back in 2010, this matter was being discussed, and then we made certain projections. Those projections meant that by, uh, by, by uh, now, that figure would be around 250, uh, say 256 billion rand. Now, if you look at that figure, it's now uh, the situation has changed. And so with changing economy and so on, the figure will now be very different. But uh, that w the figure of 250 billion was based on those estimations at the time. Currently, the estimations we've got is that by 2025, of the current budget, there may well be a shortfall of about 30 billion that will be needed. But now we're working on further projections because it's going to depend on a number of issues. Firstly, what services are we going to identify as to be purchased by the NHI? The package will determine that. Then, of course, um, we have to look at uh, uh, what the situation of the economy will be. We'll again have to uh, put all of those issues together. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think many people are very, very worried about the costings behind all of it because it just at this current economic climate is not, is, is, is almost something that people are very, very concerned about. And with this costing um, and p perhaps the repercussions of that will be the deterioration in the quality of health care that's given to South Africans. Would this be a, a fair concern for a lot of individuals? Well, there are a number of concerns which I think are fair. Firstly, the economic situation that we are in is actually uh, a matter of concern and uh, it's been deteriorating. But uh, as you have seen that even the global economy is being affected and so all of us will be concerned because it's about our daily uh, you know, living and therefore that concern is important. But just the experience from most of the countries that have impl impl implemented uh, NHI, they actually have said that you, you don't wait until you are in a better economic situation before you implement NHI. Uh, NHI does help to improve the quality of health as well as uh, impact positively on the economy because you've got a much more healthier population and then it helps you to build your human capital. So, uh, you know, whether you could talk to, to Japan or talk to the UK, etc., they will actually indicate to you that they started when their economy was much, much smaller than what it is, it, it, it is today. And therefore, there will never be a time where you can say it's too... Um, you know, it's, 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 uh, we shouldn't be starting because the economic situation is not uh, good enough. So that's the one concern. The second issue that has been raised, which I think everyone uh, has got a right to raise, is the fact that uh, there have been weaknesses in the health system, its infrastructure, shortage of staff in management, supply of medication. Now, these, I think, are fair, and therefore we have undertaken that as part of building our national health insurance, we're going to correct all of these issues. We're going to, therefore, be implementing uh, NHI in a phased manner, and we will take a, a sense of responsibility to, to make sure that it does not, uh, uh, you know, it, it's not implemented in a reckless manner that does not take into account all the factors that have to be considered. Yeah. I mean, if we look at the, the medical professions and uh, a lot of the practitioners have, have, there's been mixed reaction again towards this from, from health practitioners. And one of the biggest problems in South Africa is the fact that the ratio of, medical practitioner to patient is exceptionally high, perhaps one of the highest in the world. I mean, I think it sits at about um, one medical practitioner to a thousand patients. And the concern is that 
with this bill, we may lose even more health professionals in this sector. How are we trying to ensure that you will in fact retain these professionals that we have in the country and not lose them because we're already seeing so many leaving and worried about this bill and the state of the health uh, sector once it's fully implemented? Well, uh, you know, we've been losing uh, health practitioners, um, uh, what we call uh, medical practitioners and health professionals over many years. And in fact, from 1994, it even became worse because, uh, you know, some of the communities that were not traditionally involved in moving, to my, um, emigrating to various countries, they started moving out. Nurses who were not, they were doing so. So if you went to Canada, if you went to Australia, if you went to, you know, some of these countries, you'll find a large number of South African uh, health practitioners or health workers. And this has done nothing to do with NHI. It's been happening. And uh, here in South Africa, we get accused also of having so many uh, professionals coming from the rest of the con uh, continent. So it does happen. And uh, we must say that uh, from moving into the future, we have two views. There are those who are concerned that maybe the situation uh, might be worse, but there's a huge number of uh, family practitioners who are welcoming the national health insurance, uh, and they've gone out to say, uh, in fact, uh, we should have actually embraced more of the family practitioners in the uh, national health insurance long ago. And so you've got different views, and the general practitioners generally are actually a backbone of the NHI in most of the countries, and, and some of them here in South Africa are looking forward to that situation, and they believe we're moving too slowly. There are therefore uh, two views that you will find. Uh, the real issue is that the uh, way the medical aid has been uh, managing the situation a lot of medical practitioners have actually felt uh, left out as well. So it's not, not everything is perfect on the private sector side as well. Mm -hmm. But we need to bring a situation where we try and create a, a health system where uh, private practitioners and public hospitals and private hospitals can contribute to improving the health care access of all South Africans. That process of adjusting is going to take uh, many years in phases, and we hope that by the time we see the NHI building up into a strong fund, you will have been able to see improvement in the infrastructure, in the quality of care, in the staffing, in the supply of medicine, and we wanted to do all of this together. Mm. What, what about, um, I know you mentioned it, but let, let, let's get a little bit more detail on uh, private hospitals, pharmacies, private doctors, and also medical aids. So from our understanding is that NHI is going to be compulsory. We're all going to have to contribute to it to, uh, uh, through taxes. What about medical aids? Can we still have a medical aid? And private hospitals, um, is that going to be open and available to all South Africans now, no matter who you are or where you come from? Explain to us how that's going to work. Well, uh, the medical aids uh, will continue to exist, but there, there will be changes. Uh, the packages of what they offer uh, would obviously be adjusted on the basis of what the National Health Insurance is offering. Right now, different medical aids offer different things, and uh, they also charge different premiums and so on. So even that side, it's really not all standardized. So when we move into the national health insurance, we'll be saying this is the um, fund that will cover access for all South Africans. But then uh, uh, those who are um, preferring to uh, top up and uh, contribute to medical aid, they can do so. But we need a platform where all uh, South Africans can have access to health care. And really what we want to do is to ensure that the quality is such that it's comparable to the health care you can get anywhere else in the, in the world or in the, in the, in the country. The uh, uh, private hospitals will still be um, uh, able to offer whatever um, services that they would like to offer. Some of them may be accredited into the um, national health insurance and not necessarily all of them. 
but the issue is going to go by those who will apply and therefore they'll particularly offer services where even public services where public facilities are inadequate or where we need specific uh, services done that will help to complement what is happening in the public sector. Mm. So we foresee that uh, private practitioners, uh, pharmacists will be still uh, contracted as well. Uh, the uh, p public and private hospitals will be, but it doesn't mean that all uh, uh, private hospitals will be necessarily used. Yeah. Uh, finally, Minister, and, and you know, I, I know we have to, to wrap this up because we've, but there is too much to speak about here. So again, huge sure. concerns. When people look at the state of public hospitals at this point, we have heard and seen horrific stories coming out of of many of our health institutions we've seen patients being tied to beds we've seen that there's not enough medication we've seen that um, the, the, the the treatment that patients get is inhumane to say the least some say get that right before you overhaul the entire health system and it may even collapse. Now, these are, these are, are obviously voices coming in and they're going to get louder and louder. But how can you assure South Africans that this is not going to be a system that is going to be collapsed and it is going to open up for major corruption? Well, firstly, that, uh, let's deal with the issue of, co of corruption. The structure of the NHI is a, a different structure to some of the state-owned enterprises such as ESCOM and so on. It will be operating in the form of uh, like a Medical Research Council, uh, HSRC and so on, where the powers are limited. All that the entity does is to receive money from the government and then go out and uh, do what has been assigned to do, so they won't be involved in speculative risk-taking uh, investments that are unsecured and all of those kinds of things. So there will not be space for that, but also the public scrutiny over the entity will be strong enough to be able to allow public to be able to you know, deal with issues and comment and raise issues in time for them to be corrected. The fact that there is corruption must not actually stop us from doing what we believe is correct, but we do need to fight corruption, make sure that there is consequence management, that you've got right people uh, doing the right job <coughs> and the proper uh, you know, uh, uh, oversight over all the work that people have to do, give them the right delegations. All of these things are correct. So with uh, the situation on the health facilities and the uh, challenges that our people have been experiencing, we actually agree that all of those need to be corrected. So as we build the uh, National Health Insurance Fund, over the years we're going to be building all of the things that are, are not going right in the health system. So by the time we say it, we come to 25, we hope that uh, South Africans will have been able to see an improvement in the quality of health, in the uh, supply of medication, and all of these issues. All of this for us is important because we have to package the two together and say for a national health insurance, you need good quality, you need good uh, supply for medicine, you need uh, proper staffing, proper qualifications, proper supervision of staff. I think South Africans must just work with us and give us support to improve the health services at the same time uh, you know, we fashion it on the basis that the future health system will be national health uh, insurance and combining the two, we should be able to get where we are going. But yes, the concerns we understand and we are going to work on them to make sure that South Africans get the best service that they deserve. Minister, we thank you for your time. We'll leave it there for now. We'll certainly be getting more, many more updates from you and your office. Uh, but thank you for that, Dr. William Kize is the Minister of Health talking to us about the National Health Insurance Bill. And uh, this is expected to come into full effect in 2026. Let's take a quick break. We